Hey everyone and welcome to the final video for Unit 7 on air pollution. This video is going to be all about how we can actually reduce the amount of air pollution not only that we produce, but that has already been produced. How can we mitigate air pollution and help make the air cleaner for all of us, humans, plants, animals, everybody, to breathe. So there are three main ways that uh, we can reduce air pollution. We can switch to alternative fuels, which is pretty straightforward. We just spent a whole, whole unit talking about that. We can have... Um, energy conservation practices, and we can have regulatory practices to help uh, reduce air pollution. So alternative fuels, right, rather than combusting wood, coal, diesel, and other fossil fuels that contribute to really, really bad air pollution, trying to switch towards alternative fuels, even things like nuclear energy uh, reduce air pollution substantially. Um, you know, wind turbines, uh, solar panels, geothermal, hydroelectric, uh, all things that we've talked about to help reduce the impact of uh, electricity generation. Additionally, we want to look at energy conservation, right? Also things we've talked about a lot before uh, in terms of our habits, we're trying to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels uh, by driving less, walking more, carpooling, educating one another, not idling your car when you're in the parking lot, right? All of those things can add up, um, you know, take take a public transport, um, try not to drive at rush hour, uh, you know, those sorts of things. Don't leave your paint cans open, you know, those sorts of things can add up. The big one is regulatory practices, though, mainly the Clean Air Act legislation signed in 1963 uh, by Lyndon Johnson, later amended in 19, uh, I want to say 1990 by George H.W. Bush. Um, and that, combined with a number of te technological advancements, have helped reduce air pollutants substantially. Uh, the Clean Air Act established the NAAQS, which is the National Ambient Air Quality Standards. Uh, they do air quality studies and monitoring. That's the reason we can check the AQI where we are right now is because of the Clean Air Act. They removed, it, removed lead from gasoline. They uh, mandated the installation of vapor recovery nozzles at gas stations to reduce the uh, leakage of VOCs. Uh, they uh, uh, put into place the sulfur dioxide cap and trade, and they set fuel standards for vehicles, increasing the uh, emissions uh, or uh, fuel efficiency and decreasing emissions. They also um, have had, or, or uh, not also, but they have had a substantial impact on the key air pollutants. Looking at some of the things we talked about. Uh, Carbon monoxide, ammonia, nitrous oxide, particulate matter of different sizes, SO2 and VOCs. You can see dramatic decreases in all of those since 1990. Some of them were already pretty low, but some of them have dropped a lot, like NOx, which is great. Um, and if we look at the amount of VOCs, which is this blue line here, we can see that has dropped substantially since two, uh, 1970, despite the fact that we're actually driving more than ever. So despite the increase in uh, fossil fuel combustion for cars, we are decreasing VOC emissions thanks to the Clean Air Act. Um, and if we look at the percentage uh, uh, increase or decrease, you can see that in 1990, uh, a, a number of things were... Um, you know, up to 50% or 75% above the national standard, which is this dotted line here. But as we move towards more current time, current time like 2018, most of the air pollutants uh, will drop below, percentage below the national standard, and some of them were already low and dropped even lower, which is great. Um, and if we look at the uh, millions of tons of air pollutants overall, again, we see that same drop. I think this is the same graph I just showed. Yeah, it is. Whoops, I put it in twice. Well, uh, it's so nice we say it twice. Uh, declining national air pollutants emissions since 1990 is fantastic. Uh, it's also increased visibility across the country. You can see that these dark blue and light blue circles uh, indicate improvement in visibility due to reduced air pollution. You can see a lot of dark blue, whereas the red and pink indi indicate a bad change in visibility. We only see that in Puerto Rico. Uh, so overall, lots of improvement there. And if we look at the number of days reaching unhealthy for sensitive groups in terms of the air quality, and just a reminder, that's uh, between 100 and 150 on the AQI, um, the number of unhealthy days for sensitive groups has dropped, again, substantially. Uh, almost a third of what they were in 2000 uh, compared to today, a little, bit, a little bit less than a third. But that's a really, really great improvement. Uh, they also, uh, as Clean Air Act also... Um, mandated the installation of catalytic converters in all cars built after 1975. And these are a really important piece of technolo technology? Technology? 
good gracious, uh, that reduce carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, and VOC emissions from cars. Uh, so uh, it, it connects between your engine and the exhaust pipe. Uh, you can find it underneath your car if you look. And it basically, through a series of chemical reactions and catalytic metals like palladium and uh, rhodium and stuff and platinum, um, it will turn carbon, mon carbon monoxide, NOx, and hydrocarbons and convert those into nitrogen gas, which is harmless, CO2, which isn't great, but it's better than these, I would argue, and water vapor, um, which is also totally fine. Uh, so it's significant improvement on air pollution thanks to the catalytic converters. Uh, here's a picture of one underneath the car. Um, and also I mentioned vapor recovery nozzles, which have been mandated to be installed at gas stations, and that helps gasoline from leaking out and evaporating into the air. Uh, there are a lot of gas station pumps around the country, and so installing these on the gas stations actually had a significant impact on the amount of VOCs in the air. Uh, coal plants, moving, shifting away from... Um, the Clean Air Act, but uh, they did they did put a cap and trade on SO2, so coal power plants are going to be incentivized to reduce their SO2 emissions and their particulate matter emissions, and uh, so these are some ways that they can do that. Um, they can desulfurize by, by trying to reduce their emissions or through um, technology known as scrubbers or fluidized bed combustion. I'm going to go through both of those now. Uh, so wet scrubbers are not what you might be thinking when you imagine. Um, they are a, a, a piece of paraphernalia that is attached to a coal power plant. I've gone through them before. Basically, when you're burning the coal to heat water to generate steam and turn a turbine and generate electricity, as you burn that coal, all those fumes need to go somewhere. And so you can direct them into a wet scrubber, which has a series of chemicals in it, often some sort of calcium carbonate, um, like um, something with alkaline properties, basic properties, that as the gas flows through here, it will actually react with this mist and, and basically simulate acid rain in this tank, so that way the gas that does evaporate does not have much or any SO2 in it whatsoever. Uh, so it's dramatically reduced SO2. The only problem is this waste uh, where it's collected here is very, very high in terms of its sulfur content. Here's another diagram showing the same thing. Uh, the contaminated gas comes in. <clears throat> it flows through this bed and through uh, liquid and mist. Um, the SO2 gets captured and removed, and the clean, cleaner gas gets uh, deposited out into the atmosphere. Uh, wet scrubbers, they remove gas um, like sulfur dioxide. They remove particulate matter. They're very compact. They can handle high temperatures, um, but they produce that waste fluid at the very bottom, like I mentioned, uh, you can see down here. Um, that's very, very highly concentrated sulfur. Um, it needs to be stored somewhere. Oftentimes, they will just store it into like a settling basin, and that can lead to the buildup of heavy metals. Um, these also can corrode over time, and they're quite expensive to put in. Dry scrubbers, on the other hand, are a similar sort of thing, um, but uh, just like in the name, it's not done through a mist. It's done um, and without, without the use of liquids. It's much more common. It is less effective, but it doesn't use a scrubbing liquid, and it, it produces less waste. So rather than the gas flowing through a mist, it's flowing through a series of um, absorbent like uh, powders. It could be limestone or something like that. Additionally, fluidized bed combustion. I've talked about this maybe two or three times now, um, and I, now is the time where it really, really matters. Basically, what you do is a couple parts to it. One, you burn coal in the presence of limestone. That's going to help capture some of that sulfur dioxide, react with the limestone, which is basic, uh, to help reduce the amount of acid. But you're also, down here, injecting pure oxygen into the chemical reaction, which is going to increase the efficiency of the reaction, right? So it increases efficiency of combustion, leading to less carbon monoxide, uh, less nitrous dioxide, um, and it also extracts sulfur dioxide. Um, now, you might be wondering, like Dora here, she's got all her safety gear on, ready to do some wet scrubbing, perhaps, um, but she wants to know, how do coal plants trap particulate matter? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, they can use something called an electrostatic precipitator, which actually isn't so straightforward. Um, there's a more straightforward solution coming up in a little bit. My apologies. But basically, what they do is they use static, static electricity, a static charge to remove dust and other pollutants, uh, particulate matter, from the air. So as the air flows through, through, there is an electric charge flowing through here, and that causes many of the solids and particulate matter to settle. A more, uh, uh, here's another more uh, simplified diagram. Uh, the air flows through, and the static charge causes the particulate matter to sort of settle out to the bottom. Um, a more obvious 
uh, answer is to just put a filter on your exhaust. This is what I was going for when I said it's quite simple. Um, this will reduce particulate matter by trapping it in the filter. You know, these are called bag house filters. Not, there's not a bag on a house. Uh, it's, just, it's just a filter. It's a very high quality filter. We've been talking a lot about HEPA filters during the coronavirus pandemic, um, but you've also got filters in things like your vacuum, uh, the hood above your stove, and your car, et cetera. All of these things help filter out particulate matter, and they can be used on an industrial scale too in a coal power plant. Um, so that's pretty much all I got for you today uh, in reducing air pollutants. This is the last one for the test, so if you've got questions, please bring them to class.